today, things have gone things have gone piratical. Uh, whether it's the lockdown or the situation, it's driven a lot of us to the edge of anarchy. And now we've uh, we've got the man to talk to, uh, Jeremy Moss, who is the author of a new book about a very interesting pirate from the golden age of piracy. Jeremy is coming to us from, uh, as I believe many in the United States like to put it, the great state of Virginia. That puts you right in the heart of pirate country, actually, in the early 18th century. And we're going to be talking about your book and a gentleman, a gentleman of fortune by the name of Steve Bonnet. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. My understanding is it is Steed Bonnet. Um, a lot of mm -hmm. people try to give it kind of a French flair, Steed Bonnet. Um, but as far as I can tell, Bonnet's the way that it was pronounced then, and, and it's typically how we pronounce it now as well. Okay. So, would you like to, first of all, just tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do that. First and foremost, I am what I would call an emerging historian. Um, not a professional historian, not classically trained, did not train at university for this, um, and has and one Welcome that has, club. that's right, and I've <laughs> kind of fallen into uh, history as more of an, an interest and have been driven more towards what I would call kind of personal interest stories, stories of history that have just really spoken to me as uh, individually and have been interesting and that I think you know could really use some scholarship. So uh, I'm a father of three. I'm married, happily married. I always add as I talk about the book, because if you know the Steve Bonnet story, you you certainly know he was not. Um, and uh, as you said, live in the great state of Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. And, and you're absolutely right, right in the heart of um, pirate country. Um, and that's really what kind of gave, got me on hooked on pirates is I was sitting in a coffee shop with one of my young sons and picked up a book about ghost stories of Virginia Beach, which is a a couple hundred miles south of here along the East Coast and um, ran into some ghost stories about Blackbeard the pirate. And, you know, if you've studied Blackbeard's story, you know that there are some really great myths and legends that surround, in particular, his death. Um, and all of that was happening kind of right around where I was. So just, just instantly got hooked and um, started to research Blackbeard in particular and was just amazed at the lack of scholarship on pirates, um, and there's still some gaps in the history of pirates, the ethnography, the anthropology, how they interacted with each other. Some of those gaps will never be full, um, but I came across in particular one pirate that just really, his story spoke to me. Um, Steve Bonnet was inept in a lot of ways, but um, for some reason was well-liked and even possibly well-loved by many, um, and I just, I was hooked. Uh, yeah, that is a great introduction to character, and it's very it's very familiar to me how I uh, come across stories I want to tell. And Steve, you're so right about Steve Bonnet. When I started reading about pirates, um, which is one of my which is one of my favorite things to read about when I when I get the inclination, um, is, is there's this guy. I mean, you, you have the great names. You know, you have Blackbeard. You have you have Bartholomew Roberts, you have you Henry know, Avery. Yeah, Avery, Calico mm -hmm. Jack, people like that. Yeah. And then bang smack in the middle of them. There's this guy called Steve Bonnet. Yeah. And he is just the most curious pirate possibly that ever took to the sea. And we'll get on to that, I guess, in a little uh, when we get on to talking about him properly. But let's first, I guess, talk, give a little information about the golden age of piracy. Yeah, I, you, you know, it's funny. I think we're all drawn to piracy for a, a, a bunch of different reasons, um, much like the pirates of the golden age were. Uh, stepping back a little bit, the golden age of piracy generally refers to a period of time between, let's call it 1650 and the 1730s, early 1730s when maritime piracy, which still exists today, obviously, uh, was a significant factor in kind of the new world, right? The Caribbean, um, how it affected the United Kingdom, even the Indian Ocean uh, at the time, North America, West Africa, was all wrapped into kind of this big swirl of piracy uh, where there were groups, specific groups at times, um, that would travel, you know, about those areas and, and really wreak havoc on, on early 
shipping and commerce. And, you know, as, as someone that looks at history and studies history, when commerce becomes affected, governments become interested. And the reality is the governments became very, very interested in those time periods. Um, you know, as I think about piracy, I really think about kind of three, three subsets of that, that golden age. You've got kind of this early buccaneering period where you've got um, mostly the English and the French seamen um, along Jamaica, Tortuga, focused Dutch, on the Spanish yeah. colonies, right? Looking at how Spain was bringing silver and gold and, and uh, other products from mostly Mexico um, through the Caribbean toward, uh, back towards you know, their kind of mainlands. You also have a round of piracy that focuses on the Indian, uh, Indian Ocean. And to me, this is fascinating because yeah. I've not spent much time there. It's a tremendous amount of money at stake, right? You've got the East, East India Company that's bringing silks and other things um, through these through the Indian Ocean. And the pirates that, that fished those waters at the time just made a tremendous amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of settle into what I call kind of the sp post-Spanish succession era, where you've okay. got a group of sailors and privateers that were left unemployed by the war of Spanish succession. and turned what they knew, which is staying on their ships, uh, taking over um, other ships, um, you know, drinking, mm -hmm. uh, philandering, you know, doing all kinds of things that, uh, that, that sailors at the time did. Yeah. And it's really that era that, that's fascinating to me, partly because it occurred in places that I know, uh, places that we've already talked about that, that were near where I currently live, um, that I can mm -hmm. envision, that I can picture. But also because I can understand it, um, I can understand men and women that that didn't have jobs, didn't have things to do, didn't have structure in place, didn't have families necessarily, and were kind of stuck. And they turned to what they knew. And I think that there's a story in that that resonates, particularly when people feel uh, disenfranchised, even today, um, or even you know they feel trapped. Right? We we talked yeah. earlier, probably off, off the video about. You know, being in lockdown or, or being quarantined in a way or being separated from our normal life. And you just start to get that itch to go out yeah. and do something, whether it's legal or not. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting, and this this relates to Bonnet's story in particular, is if you've ever stood at the edge of the ocean and looked out, I think most of us get this feeling inside that they either want to walk out as far as they can go. And then when they can't walk any further, they want to swim. And when they can't swim any further, they want a boat. There is some draw to the ocean um, that I think traps most of us. Not all of us, but most of us. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had, certainly had that feeling, too, where I just stared at the ocean and said, man, what, what else is out there? Um, and, you know, I've, I've got a sense there's some of that wanderlust in a lot of these pirates and sailors and privateers that were left unemployed at the time. When I was little, we, my family used to spend a lot of time in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of pirate stuff about Florida, okay. and um, I'm not going to lie, I was a big fan of the ride in Orlando. Sure. Um, and one day I just thought to myself, you know, what's the real story behind these people? This is, like you say, from from the times of Henry Morgan, buccaneering period through to the Golden Age, and the various subsets of the Golden Age and stuff, uh, is fascinating. The why these this the the environment was created is fascinating you know like you say e economics has a lot to do with it um the driving reason people become pirates is because they need a job and they have particular sets of skills not to not to not to, not to sound too much like liam neeson <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's you're, you're absolutely right well most of them we should say had a particular set exactly of exactly um, and uh, that brings up the subject of this chap this guy called steed bonnet well fancy seeing you all the way at the end of the video guys thank you from the bottom of my heart for reaching the end of that show i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it please leave a like if you didn't enjoy it tell me in the comments and i'll delete it later 